cuz. Okay. Introduce yourselves and your band, please. Um, Dave, I'm play bass sometimes. I'm Kaz, I'm drummer. I'm Fiaco, I sing. James the roadie. I'm Dana, I play guitar. But James, how'd you get so big? Yo, I just lift weights a lot, and I listen to Brick, which is my own band, so you listen to it too. Bad <laughs> Brick. That dude's from Baltimore. Me. He's a fill-in bassist from Baltimore. Yeah, he's Baltimore. filling in. With the three, three members. The what happened to that bassist? He had, knees, uh, he had nurse, knees. knee surgery, got taken out by a crow. Mad Straight ball. Up taken out. He was at a Mad Ball show like a year ago. Still stage dove. Yeah. And got uh, taken out during heaven he got health. taken out. He's got surgery. How did Long Island scene influence you guys growing up? Um, well, obviously, the scene there is pretty good. And there's a lot of old, like, older bands, Sound Majority, Killer Idols, all those bands like that. But uh, when we started our band, we wanted to kind of do something different. So there's a lot of bands there that are like a lot of pump, like a lot of pop punk bands, which are cool, and a lot of melodic bands, which are also cool. But we wanted to try and sign like heavier music. So you wanted to try and like change it up like that. Yeah, there are a lot of old, there are a lot of lo older Long Island bands that are, that are fucking hard and stuff like that. We've been killer idol shows and Mad Ball and all kinds of VOD and stuff like that. Influence Long Island and stuff like that. Crumb suckers and stuff like that. So we did the harder aspect of hardcore and took it like also mixed with Cleveland and Baltimore and all kinds of old like hard and stuff like that. But Long Island, when we were growing up, that's like the exact scene we did. So we still have Long Island pride and shit, you know. So what's life like in Long Island? A lot of younger kids filtering in and out of the scenes. I mean, when you go to Baltimore show, it's old 30-year-old guys. Chapter Nice is considered young kids. We are considered the older kids now because there's so many younger kids. There's Crime and Stereo and Agent and so many like good, like, uh, attract little, little tiny kids. So you can't, you can't fucking mosh as hard as you want or something like that because if you get sued in Long, you know how Long Island is. A bunch of yeah, crazy rich dudes trying to sue you every five seconds, something like that. So there's a, there's a, lot, a lot of young kids and a lot. Everything's really safe, and uh, we keep everything in line. So like that. <laughs> That's good to hear. So you guys are the regulators. Okay. Yeah. A lot of it's the problem with Long Island is there's like no venues. There's like hardly any venues anymore. They all it's like a lot of just like bad bands playing like violent music and kids like yeah. going like being dumb. Kids are getting sued. Some, some more, like, more metal venues. kids and kids think it's uh, all right to punch holes and walls and people and shit like that. Some kids kid just had a seizure. But some kids, some 15-year-old kid booked a fest with uh, all Long Island local bands and some kid had a seizure because he got punched in the head and fell out and that shit's not cool, so we make sure that shit doesn't happen to hardcore stays in fucking tight pants wearing metal. Seeing fake, gets holler at me. So how do you keep these people in line? Well, it's a lot, that's what I'm saying, it's a lot of young kids, so we're the older kids, so if anything, you know, if we don't see anything we like, like, we're just mole metal kids. Well, it won't physically assault them or something like that, but we'll stand in front of them and make sure it's not how things go, it's not how things are run and stuff like that in Long Island. Talk about your recent releases, tour plans for your band. Uh, right now, Tap and Rice is being like a big brother and taking us out and shit like that. So we're going with them, and there's also bigger bands along Island like Soldiers, so like that, like this, you know, about those guys, stuff like that. They have a smaller band in Cindy area. We're going out with Brick for a week uh, in July and stuff like that. We're gonna just try to get our name out there right now. Brick. We're we're still younger kids, you know. We're still doing our thing. So as long as we play hard music, you know, Mosh will come. Mosh has to follow sooner or later. We recorded it. We recorded a demo. With Phil Douglas, Phil Latterman, he's in the band no, Latterman. No, not Ben Latterman. So he did a fucking awesome job, and he's the man. Yes. So we have, then, we have the demo out there. We're gonna write a seven inch, for, and do things like the way hardcore should be done, so like that tour and shit like that, and get things out there ourselves. Don't rely on MySpace and fucking message boards to get things done. <laughs> old school way. Yeah, exactly. Word of mouth. Mhm. Mm Speaking of old school, Killing Time shirt. Yeah. Saw him a couple times. No big deal. <laughs> Have you seen Killing Time? Never. Never? So oh, playing awesome. in Philly in uh, July. Yeah, they're playing in Philadelphia. It's half, half hard in Killing half Time and stuff like that. It's half hard versus Foundation in Killing Time in Philadelphia. They had a show or a fest? A show. show. It's just a at show. The Unita at the Unitarian first, Church. First Presbyterian Church. Such a fucking sick show. Very nice. Awesome thing. They're That's playing awesome. Uh, in Yonkers too at the, in August, I think. Yeah, they play. They in Yonkers, play. upstate New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, trash Talk from Philly. No, no, no. Uh, from California. California, yeah, yeah, trash talk. That's when they played Philly. Oh, when they played Philly. Oh, no, when they played Philly. Reunion. Oh, shit, that's right. Yeah. You were there? Yeah. What was it? It was amazing. It was a really good show. Are you still around for a bunch? No, they only played that one reunion show. They only played uh, two shows. They played two shows. They had one of them was afternoon, one at night. That kids went off? Yeah, it was crazy. Very cool. Who are some other bands that influenced you? Uh, well, my, one of my biggest influences is Kill Your Idols. I'm from Long Island. I love that band. Uh, just a lot of New York hardcore, Integrity, Ringworm, 
Yeah. Stuff like that. That's right. And you guys were at that uh, show in the parking lot? What yeah, yeah. Show? yeah, yeah, yeah. Rattle show? Yeah, we were. That was the sickest right show. Right I got a tattoo so the day after and stuff like that. I love Kill. Yeah, we both have Kill Your Rattle tattoos. Yeah, I got one on his leg that his friend did himself. Yeah. Some DIY Kill Rattle tattoos. Yeah, then oh. it's both the same size. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about that show. The last oh, show. The show was insane. Were you at the venue before it yeah, closed? Yeah, yeah, of course. It was all three days. It was uh, Long State. Island, Brooklyn, Long Island again. And the third one, Crime Sierra goes to go on. First song, Crime Sierra goes to play. Uh, what's it called? Like the cops come in, tell us there's too many people inside. You got to shut down and shit like that. And uh, it was my boy Rotman, part of that Mongoloid crew he did. And then uh, they, they were saying what's, what's going on. You know, they built a stage for the show. So then the word of mouth got out that uh, they're going to play in the parking lot. It's going to be secret and shit like that. You know, don't tell anyone. All of a sudden, 300 kids yeah, show up. That, that's fucking you know, there's awesome. some kids from Europe there, just like that. You hear your own voice singing "Kid Out" last time it's ever gonna happen. Like it was insane. Bro. It couldn't have worked out like any better. It just ended up, you know, like, a, ton people, a ton of people showed up to the place, got shut down, and then you know, Left. more people, more people show up at this random place, at, like some practice space parking lot. And it was just like it was amazing. Awesome. I still get chills when I watch it. Like Kira it was, it was. I was so upset. And I thought it was gonna be like. You know, like the end, like that would have shitty way to end, but like it really Daddy couldn't Clipper. have gone at, at all. Respect to Daddy Clip, I trapped in the rice, pulled him up pretty deep. Hi. Not Ben, though. With ben? No. Ben's, Rick, Ben's no. in trapped in the rice, he guys didn't get the interview. Yeah, where were you? They found him over the border, made him drum ever since. No big deal. Okay, so the future plans for your band, what's happening from this point onward? Kind of tour, make a seven inch, keep writing fucking hard tunes, and then hopefully keep getting out there and out there and out there. Hopefully just stay on tour for a long time after this year. And probably and probably suck suck two guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suck two guys after that. I'm not gonna suck any, any dudes. So not so uh, Any final plugs for friends of yours, people you'd like to mention? Uh Mind Peace, uh well X Mind Peace, something like that, and they got backtrack incendiary. I just always suggest checking out Incendiary, Long Island Hardcore. There's the a agent. lot more hard hardcore Capital. coming up and stuff like that, Capital Agent. So Long Island's fucking doing things again. Yeah, it used awesome. to be just fucking brand new and chat and take next Sunday. Now it's known for more harder bands coming out and shit like that. So I suggest you check them out. Check out Chapter Nice, Stay Cold. Check Cold out Curtain's fire. demo, Cold Fire. Dig that. That's it. <laughs> Last thing I gotta say, hardcore values, what does it mean to you guys? It means a whole lot to me. Like I really believe in fucking uh, not filtering out kids that shouldn't be here, but kids kids of the year will always be here and shit like that, but it's really important to keep your values strong and stuff like that and remember where hardcore came from, where it's going, like where it should be, you know? Like make sure you don't fucking just let it fucking mold into some teeny bopper mall group thing. That you let it be what it is and it's you and your friends having a good time and stuff like that instead of kids exploiting it and making shit stupid. People making money off shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that's not cool. Big record labels set like, just like making tons of money off hardcore. It shouldn't be like that. What do you say? Gotham? Gotham Roll. Gotham Roll. I don't know what that is. Calm down with it. Capitalist off? Yeah. Gotham Roll. Gotham Roll. Alright, that's it. Well done. Check it out, Curtains. Oh.